welcome to episode 8 of the In The Author Mindset Podcast with me, Adam Croft. Now first things first, please do excuse both the sound of my voice and any strange noises that you hear during today's episode. I've had a bit of a cold recently and one of my neighbours is uh, currently having a new patio laid. So uh, any odd crunching, whirring and banging noises will either be coming from me or from them, who knows. And for that reason, this episode will probably be even shorter than usual. But let's crack on. It's been another very busy week since the last episode. I've now finished work on Closer to You, my new psychological thriller. I finished that at the back end of last week and the book is now up for pre-order. It's uh, it's looking very good, actually. I'm staggering the promotion to try and keep a nice trickle of pre-orders uh, ready to ramp that up for the launch and to build maximum organic visibility for the book. But the early signs are very good indeed. I'm running some low-level ads on Facebook and they're getting click-through rates of 10% and more on some days uh, with clicks as low as 5p each, which is about 6 7 cents. Uh, conversion rates are good too and the ads are nicely profitable even with the book at £1.99 and not out for another three weeks. Now at this point I am of course tempted to start ramping up but I will be doing that gradually so the spend can uh, peak shortly after the launch and gain maximum organic visibility so I will keep you posted as to how that goes. <clears throat> On last week's show I told you I'd been super productive and smashing out seven and a half thousand word days. And I also mentioned that Colin F. Barnes had posted in the Indie Author Mindset Facebook group about his productivity results and how he used Brain.fm to get focused and write 8,000 words in two days. This week in the Indie Author Mindset Facebook group, Pete Blythe has been telling us about his own productive week. He said... Talking of productivity, I've just written a 72,000 word first draft in 26 days. Not quite up to Adam's speed, but I'm doing this on top of a day job, Pete says, so I'm pretty happy with 2,768 words per day on average, which is excellent if that's just being done um, outside of a, a full-time day job, uh, along with everything else that life throws at you. So that just goes to show what you can do when you're putting those productivity strategies into practice. Dina Jo Kanner asked earlier this week, what is the approximate number of books that have to be sold before you can safely let your friends and family buy your book without screwing up the Amazon also bought algorithm? I'll start by giving you a bit of background on this. You'll probably have seen the people who bought this product also bought carousel on Amazon product pages, including on books. This is one of Amazon's ways of suggesting new products and books that readers might like, and it has historically been a good source of organic visibility for authors. But for many new authors, the temptation is to ask your family and friends to buy the book and to tell their friends. But this might not actually be a great idea. I know it's tempting, but uh, bear in mind, for example, that You've written a thriller, let's say, and your family and friends usually read fantasy and romance, but they've decided to keep you happy by buying your book because they're nice people. They're friends of yours. They're related to you. Of course, they're going to help you out. On your product page, you're likely to then see your also boughts populated by fantasy and romance books because Amazon knows that's what your readers also read. These are the items they also bought. Amazon however knows that you've told it it's a thriller and it's been categorizing it as a thriller up until then cue complete and utter confusion for the algorithm amazon's algorithm rewards strong branding and ensuring that it's clear what type of book yours is 
clear and easy categorization is going to give you the best possible chance of organic visibility on Amazon. Of, of course, if your family and friends are big fans of your type of book, that's great. If your Aunt Brenda does read thrillers back to back all the time and she is your target reader, then by all means tell her to buy the book. But if she's a big Mills and Boone fan or if she reads military sci-fi or even if she doesn't read at all, it's probably best not to ask her to buy it. Otherwise, focus on harnessing your target reader. If your target reader also happens to be your family and friends, great. This it actually kind of segues into a question from Andrine Lowe earlier this week, who said, I'm also faced with having to use a pen name for a different genre. I'm currently using Andrine Lowe for my cozy mysteries and chick lit because there is a huge crossover with those two genres. However, with the comic horror I'll be publishing in a few months, I'm tossing up between Andrine N. Lowe and A. N. Lowe with my preference for the first. Adam, what are your thoughts on this? Would adding the N be enough to fool the algorithms without having to set up completely new social media, etc.? Or is it a N low or nothing? Again, if you write cross genre, you're likely to be confusing Amazon's algorithms as Amazon is going to be unable to categorize or brand you clearly. If you never strongly match anything, you'll never rank well for it. For example, I write psychological thrillers, crime thrillers, and mysteries. They're closely related enough that I can get away with that, and I do it all under my name, Adam Croft. However, I publish my non-fiction under the name Adam L. Croft. That way, readers know it's still me. Other writers who are my, my target market for those books will recognize the name, they'll know it's me. But Amazon's algorithm doesn't get confused and start recommending books about writing and publishing to crime fiction fans and vice versa. It's, it's another way of ensuring that your brand is strong on Amazon under the author name that you're publishing under and ensuring that the algorithms know who you are, they know what you do, and they're able to effectively recommend your books to people who would want to read them. If you have any questions, queries or problems when it comes to writing and publishing, just fire me an email at podcast at indieauthormindset.com or catch me in the Indie Author Mindset Facebook group and we can address those questions here on the podcast. Now, it is time for this week's Ninja Tip. Make money with free BookBub featured deals. Yes, you heard that right. But there's a caveat. If you have an audiobook edition of your title, you can make a tidy profit with a free BookBub featured deal. This is because of a quirk in reader behavior when it comes to audiobooks. Audible subscribers get free credits each month to spend on audiobooks. And after that, they're looking at around $20 a book or more. However, if they add the audio bolt on to an ebook they already own, this will usually set them back less than $5. Because of this, it's common for audio lovers to pick up free ebooks, add the audiobook on top for a couple of dollars, and use WhisperSync to effectively listen to an audiobook for just a couple of dollars instead of $20 plus. This works particularly well with box sets. Audio lovers love box sets because they get far more bang for their buck out of those. And the last few times I've had BookBub featured deals and made the title free for the duration, which includes a box set. I tried it on one of my box sets. The deals made a very impressive day one profit on WhisperSync audio bolt-ons alone, despite the ebook itself being completely free. And when you factor in read-through and reader acquisition from the featured deal, you can see why these are still so powerful and such worthwhile investments for authors to make. Thank you for listening and for all of your continued support. I did say it was going to be a short one this week. My voice has held out. The builders have stayed quiet. So I think I will um, cut my losses and I will leave it there for this week. I really appreciate all of your feedback, good and bad. And as I said earlier, I'm very keen that this podcast gives you exactly what you need. So if you have any suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover, questions you'd like me to answer or anything else at all, just fire me an email at podcast at or catch me in the 
Indie Author Mindset Facebook group. And don't forget that as a listener to the Indie Author Mindset podcast, you are entitled to a very generous discount on any of my courses for authors. Listen on for that. The uh, discount code and details of how you can claim that are in the end credits. Please do remember to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And I'll see you back here next time for episode nine. Take care. This episode of the Indie Author Mindset podcast was presented by me, Adam Croft. The theme music for this podcast is by the Caesareans. Don't forget, you can claim 50% off any Indie Author Mindset course by entering the promo code podcast at the checkout. Links are in the show notes. For more great tips and guidance, join the Indie Author Mindset group on Facebook. Facebook.